Welcome to Meet Your Neighbor. We are here today in December at the home of Kathy Yankee, who lives off the beaten path in Hopkinton with pigs in her backyard. And there's a beautiful woodpecker in a tree, and there are sheep in the side window out uh, on the other side. And I'm sitting by the fireplace that has been burning here for over 200 years. So let's join Kathy in her home and learn more about her life here and beyond. Hi, Kathy. Uh, thank you for inviting us into your warm home here in Hopkinton on such a cold December day outdoors. Uh, it's lovely here in your home setting out off the beaten path. It seems a little hard to find, but just beautiful surroundings here uh, with trees and a pond and there are even pigs and uh, other farm life out, out your back door here. Um, it's, it's a beautiful home and it, it looks like it's an old home. Can you tell a little bit of the history of where you live? Sure. Um, the house here is probably uh, circa uh, 1803, 1802. Um, some, so, sometimes I think it's a little bit older, but that's kind of the records that we have. Um, it, it was probably older and then the house burnt down and then they built a new mm -hmm. house around the fireplace and we have a rather oh, wow. large fireplace here yeah it's beautiful in fireplace. our living room we can put like three foot logs in it wow so. and uh so the the, the the original part of the house was just you know the living room and probably the two rooms that are mm -hmm. now the dining room and the den mm -hmm. um then as, as years went by they added on uh, our master bedroom, for instance, I think was the carriage house at the time, and mm. then it was, you know, refinished and put into the house. Mm. Uh, and then the kitchen was added on later on as well. Mm -hmm. And then we've done some renovations through the years as well. So um, we've been here since, my husband bought this house in 1977, and I came along a little bit later in the 80s. And mm. uh, we've done a lot of work on it and done a lot of work in the yard, and it's, we just love it here. Mm. We're just very happy mm. here. Yeah, well, I, I can see why, certainly, that you do love it here. Uh, do you know any of the previous history of uh, owners? Or? We do know that the house was, um, the first uh, occupant of the house was Royal Comey and his wife, Polly. Um, and they, uh, Royal's father gave him either the house or and the land or just the land, and then he mm -hmm. built the house here. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, most, I think that probably we are the oldest or the longest owners of the house because it did change hands a lot, mm -hmm. um, like several times in the, you know, in the in the ninth or the twentieth century. So, um, but I don't really know the total history of it. We've gone to Cambridge and looked up, you know, in mm -hmm. the files there, but it doesn't go back that far. It goes back to people that we already knew who owned it. Who was uh, one of the men that owned it um, was responsible for building the. Um, Framingham, the Shoppers World, oh. the, the original one with the dome, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the old one. So, uh -huh. um, somebody else was a banker that lived here. So, um, uh -huh. but that's uh -huh. all. I really don't know that much about s the rest of the folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All these other people and stories you don't know about. Uh, how interesting uh, of this home. The one thing that remained after the fire is the, fire the fireplace. Place. We're sitting right in front of here, and it, it is. It's beautiful. Uh, place to, and you use it regularly. We do, uh -huh. absolutely, yeah. 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 yeah, when we put the addition on the kitchen, we specifically didn't put a wood burning stove or a mm. fireplace in because mm -hmm. we wanted mm -hmm. to, to still focus on the fireplace here in the living mm -hmm. room. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, it's an extraordinary fireplace. Um, and uh, to be living here uh, in so much history, uh, whether you know directly or not, uh, but uh, it certainly uh, is in the surroundings, in the home, in the walls, and then outside uh, with the animals. Um, has this ever been a farm, a working farm? I don't think it was. No. I think that this whole track of land from Winter Street down was apple orchards at one time oh, long uh -huh. ago. Yeah. Um, and then they cut them all down. But mm -hmm. um, I think it was farmland at one time, certainly. Um, the fields were, you know, pretty clear when we moved here, or my husband did. There were some old, some, um, those uh, rose bushes that were in the field, and he and my husband and Dr. Love, who was lived next door at the time, um, they cl cleared the fields, and now we, we, you know, we hay them. Hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we don't have animals, but all the people around us have sheep and goats and pigs and what have you, and so we, you know, we hay the fields and give them uh, all the hay so they uh -huh. have it for the winter. Uh -huh. So it's kind of nice. It so it's nice to have the, all the animals and not have the responsibility yeah. uh -huh. of, of feeding them, <laughs> yeah. but certainly enjoy watching them and, mm -hmm. you know, and 
all the kids in the neighborhood have to come over and see the, you know, the little oh, kids sure. are all interested in coming over and seeing the, the animals, so yes. it's fun. Yeah, I notice you have pigs out your yeah. back window, yeah. Yeah. and there are birds and some sheep over in that direction, <laughs> right. and uh, some other uh, interest chickens are around the chickens corner. And a, <laughs> and a um, not a not a llama, a alpaca. Alpaca, alpaca also. Alpaca. Wow. So, uh -huh. so it's, it's it's very it's it's great. It's you know yeah. it's nice living in the country mm -hmm. and it's being so close to you know the different cities and stuff. But yeah. it's nice being here. We we really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I know a little bit um, from your uh, early roots, uh, you grew up as an army brat. I did. And so you lived in a lot of different places, uh, uh, yet you really settled into Hopkinton. And right. As, when I was a child, you know, my dad was in the service, he was in the, in the army, and mm -hmm. uh, we traveled to several, you know, many states, uh, Alaska before it was a state. Wow. Uh -huh. um, and uh, Japan, Wait. and then uh, when I was in high school, he re he had completed his uh, army, you know, his 25 years in the army, and uh, huh. moved to upstate New York, and I finished my high school there, and uh -huh. then came to Massachusetts to school, yeah. and it always felt, you know, even then, that you know, when I was 19 and 20, like it was home. So I've always home. kind of yeah. I've been other places, but always came back to Massachusetts hmm. and. No, I was here from 72 to 79 and then moved to, or 78, and then moved to Arizona for a year and a half and then moved back here in 1980 and I've been here ever since. So. Mm -hmm. Wow, so that's interesting. Home. You just you keep coming back, back and here, then right, right. settling here now in your retired years. Yes, as well. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have no plans to move to Florida or what have you. We uh -huh. just yeah. stay here in Hopkins. Wow. It's nice. <laughs> um, how was that for you as a child? I know people have different perspectives of being in the army as a child and moving I enjoyed it. I, I think the last our last move was the hardest because I was a, a at the end of my junior year of high school and had to move um, to finish my senior year at another yeah. school. And uh -huh. That was hard. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it was it was enjoyable. We went to nice places, um, mm -hmm. met a lot of nice people. My parents had wonderful friends all over the country, and mm -hmm. you know I enjoyed it. Um, but as I said, the last year was the mm -hmm. was the hard move. But then I was ten years older than most my siblings, so they they really weren't they didn't they were raise connected. the same way I was. They mm -hmm. they lived in one place, went to one school, mm -hmm. and so we have kind of a different, almost like two families kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I can, I must say. What helped you with that hard connection in your teen years, which are can be a hard time? Anyway. Well, it was, you know, there was, at the time, you know, it was just, my father got a job someplace else and you had to go. That's and it what wasn't, you have to do. And yet, yeah. what you had to do. Mm -hmm. There was no place for me to stay. It was not a, when you're 17 year old, your mother does not want to leave you with someone else mm -hmm. to raise, you know, for mm -hmm. that last year of high school. So where it was tough, I made some very nice friends mm -hmm. my last year of high school too, mm -hmm. and, and it's people I still keep in touch with. So. You know, so it was in the long run. It was a good move, but mm -hmm. at the time, it was it was hard. Well, you so. learned how to adapt. It sounds exactly. Like, and, yeah, mm -hmm. um, some so. sense of resiliency in that. Right. And um, okay, and in your childhood years of being in all different places, uh, what would you say is one thing that you really loved to do as a child in your free time, your play, or uh, oh gosh, I don't know. Can you just the normal things, I guess, you know, oh. just, I, I think the the, the the really interesting time was the year it's been, a year and a half I spent in Japan, but oh. I was a little bit too young, I was in the fifth grade, mm. had I been a teenager at that time, they had just wonderful things for those kids to do, and mm. you know, and a very big learning experience, but it was still very exciting, you know, we learned a lot of different things, learned how to, I could speak a little Japanese, ah. we we did origami, and mm -hmm. we, did, you know, had lots of nice uh, outings and stuff like that, so it was, mm -hmm. it was an interesting time, it was mm -hmm. fun, mm -hmm. but um, I wish I had been a little bit older to yeah. really enjoy it. You know. Did you ever travel back? I had never been back, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. no, no, I haven't, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, maybe someday, yeah, that's uh -huh. I like to travel, so. Uh-huh. All right, so uh, then after childhood and high school, you went on to study nursing? Yes, I did. Yeah, I went to nursing school in Massachusetts in uh, Beverly, Mass, mm -hmm. Beverly Hospital, which was a great experience. We did our two affiliations. We went to Children's Hospital and mm -hmm. we went to Boston State Hospital for uh, psychiatric training. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a great school. I just mm -hmm. had a, a really good time and, and learned a lot. And um, after s three years here, I went back to my folks were living in Watertown, New York. My dad was working at um, Fort Drum up there. And I went back for a year to sort of get on my feet and save some money. And 
then I just decided I really needed to do something, something. And I could, all my friends were still in grad school. And uh, so I said, I, my dad had been in the service and he loved it. So I joined the Air Force wow. okay. and um, spent two years in California at uh, Castle Air Force Base, just out, well, about a, about two and a half hours outside of uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, you know, great experience. Mm -hmm. It was, um, I mean, I, just had a good time, and uh, it was just exciting. Met my first husband there, and mm -hmm. then moved to Los Angeles for a few years, and then we ended up here in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And I, at that time, I went to work at the to Jimmy Fund or the Dana Farber. It was before it was with the Dana Farber. It was the Jimmy Fund, and I worked in the um, Platelet Lab, which we did support care for uh, the cancer patients at Children's, and it was kind of a blood bank kind of thing. We took whole blood, we also took platelets and stuff, and, and that's where I met um, my second husband uh, yeah. and, um, at Ron, and uh, so we worked there for six years and then went to Arizona for a while and then came back to Boston, and I've been here since 1980. I've been back hmm. in, in the Boston area mm -hmm. and in, in Hopkinton since about 1980. So. Wow, but a lot of uh, life, a uh, lot of life in yeah. those last sentences <laughs> that you've been telling about yours. Um, just to back up a little bit, uh, can you tell uh, what kind of work you did when you were in the service? In the service, just uh, general med medical surgical. Um, we got some of the fellows that came back from Vietnam yeah. uh, in our hospital, but for, for the most part, they went to some of the bigger, our, my base was a small base, yeah. and uh, they went to like Travis Air mm -hmm. Force Base, or they went to Texas to the big, um, big centers in Texas mm -hmm. if they needed, um, you know, any kind of long-term medical care. Um, but it was, a very nice place to work and, and mm -hmm. it was just a nice you know bunch of people that I worked with um, it, but it was I just signed up for two years and that's that's all I stayed in it was mm -hmm. two, just two years but it was uh, you know it was a great experience in um, both professionally and uh, personally it was just a nice it was mm -hmm. a nice thing to do mm -hmm. yeah I would imagine with the veterans coming back from the war to have uh, such a place to come yeah, back to and nice, yeah. good people like you to be yeah. working there with them. Uh, I uh, would imagine you probably met a number of different people coming back from war and right. different stories that you heard from them. Right. Uh, can you say anything in particular you learned uh, from either one patient or your time there? No, I just, I just knew it was, I, it was a, it's something that I wanted to do. Um, I just felt like I wanted to serve my country for a while. Yeah, my yeah. my father had done it, yeah, and right. I just thought it was a a good thing for me to do. I know I don't think my brother. Well, my brothers were too young at the time to be thinking about the service, and then when by the time they were old enough, there was the draft was over and all that kind of thing. So, um, so I was the only one in the family that went. You know, sort of followed my father's hmm. footsteps. But, uh huh. Uh, just was, you know, it was a good experience, mm -hmm. and one I never regretted doing. So. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I've been working in, I worked for the Red Cross when I finally came back to Boston area. Oh, and what did that involve? I worked at, uh, at first I just, I worked part-time, and then I worked full-time. I, I uh, ran blood drives, mm -hmm. and then for about 10 years, I was in the office and manager of the collection uh, teams, and I, you know, sent them out my staff out to, to run the blood drives and I kind of was mm -hmm. in administration for a while and when I'm, I retired from the Red Cross from full-time in, in 2000 I uh, continued to work uh, per diem for the next 13 years so mm -hmm. uh, and I did two days a week at that point in time which was was nice because then I could get involved in the community here in Hopkinton before that when you're working full-time and I was yeah. traveling to Dedham it was you know, you leave at 6.30 in the morning, you get home at 6 at night, you yeah. can't do a lot of um, other things, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of other volunteer work. And once I retired and could, you know, use my energies in other places, it was very nice. I joined the women's club hmm. um, right away, and I joined the garden club. And um, both of those have been, you know, very rewarding. Um, hmm. The women's club maybe even more so because we just give so much more back to the community with the monies we raise mm -hmm. and that's a great group you know group of gals mm -hmm. that um it, sometimes i wonder why more people don't join the women's mm -hmm. club because mm -hmm. we just there's so many you know great things that we can do in town for um all the different organizations that need you know help mm -hmm. you know whether it be project hope or the respite center or um the food pantry and those kind of things mm -hmm. so 
Um, so it's a regular giving out to right. different people Right. You know, we raise money need. by the, our phone directory, and mm -hmm. we, you oh. know, turn around and give 100% of that, you know, what uh, uh, minus what the cost of the directory yeah. is, of course, uh, back to the community and in and, and, and Hockington to, for all the families, in, you know, in Hockington and in the organizations here. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. um, and the Garden Club too. I mean, we do mm -hmm. all the nice uh, beautification around town, which is mm -hmm. great too. So, um, two of my you know, gardening is one of my passions. So uh, it's kind of uh -huh. fun. And uh, so you're. It looks like you have some plenty of land around here. To yes, be lots to take care of. Uh -huh. But we enjoy it. You know, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. if I didn't yeah, enjoy yeah. it, it, would be drudgery. And I can't say that it is. You know, mm -hmm. we really do enjoy, um, you know, putting in gardens, taking care of what we have, and. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just um, enjoying, and it just, you know, almost like when you sit down on our deck, I feel like that, you know, this is, a, I'm on vacation because it's mm -hmm. such a beautiful mm -hmm. setting here, mm -hmm. so we're mm -hmm. very happy here. Yeah, well, um, that's good to hear in these years. Um, now, if I might go back a little bit sure. again, uh, because you also covered a lot of ground in there, and working for the Red Cross, uh, what I was curious about, uh, you know, I hear a pattern of how you have had to adapt and move around and uh, see a lot of surroundings, a lot of different circumstances, meet a lot of people and, and have been helpful to people even in retirement years um, in different ways. And um, your work for the Red Cross was mainly in dealing with blood as well. Uh, right, yeah. In the collection yeah. of that. In collection, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, we, you, we collect blood everywhere, you know, whether mm -hmm. it be a, an office building, a church, mm -hmm. uh, high schools, colleges. High school students. High school students. Mm -hmm. And those are, I used to just love to go to high schools and colleges because the kids are, lots of enthusiasm mm -hmm. and lots of times it's their first or second experience of donating and they just are, you know, they're great. You mm -hmm. know, they're, they're like sponges. They want to know what's going on and uh, lots, of, as I say, lots of enthusiasm. So, if, and if you can give them a good experience, then maybe you've captured them for, mm -hmm for a long time for to become a blood donor mm -hmm. and uh, as you know we always need mm -hmm. you know we have many many hospitals in Massachusetts and lots of uh, surgeries and what have you to support so it was mm -hmm. it was always you know we're always on the edge of catching collecting enough for mm -hmm. our, our needs here in Boston because mm -hmm. I think we have like 150 hospitals that we between wow. in yeah. Massachusetts Maine blood. and New Hampshire and so you need a lot of Lot, and a lot of big surgeries happen here mm -hmm. as well. So. so some people might say, oh, that's, you know, not the most exciting thing as opposed to going overseas and helping in some crisis place. But uh, what you're talking about is a way that every person who comes can give back and right. and help someone they don't even know in some way at Absolutely. some point in the hospital. Um, you know, and for yeah. community to all be giving back and helping as right. well and making it pleasant for them, just like when you worked with the Vietnam veterans as right. well. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, did you ever deal with anxiety, people oh, sure. passing out or oh, sure. acting out? Uh, and Absolutely. How some, you? You know, some, it's not for everybody, mm -hmm. but you know, mostly, most of the time you can talk people through it, you know, and I mean, some people it's just very important for them to do it and mm -hmm. they, you know, and they have a lot of, everybody has a fear of a needle, so, huh, yeah. but anyway, you know, most people do fine, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, we What's all, your secret? How did how would you allay fears or uh, well, you calm just talk down? to people and you know and talk to them, and get them to talk about themselves for the most mm -hmm. part, you know, because mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. they then they relax and they mm -hmm. you know share, mm -hmm. and they, everybody has you know they have a reason. Maybe it's an uncle or an aunt or yeah. a cousin or a sibling that was sick and they want to, you know, they want to give back, but they're still afraid. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, just talk to them, you know, and just deal with them on their level, you know, mm -hmm. just. Because everybody has, everybody has a story. Mm, everybody, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good advice. And uh, and blood, interesting enough, uh, led you to your husband, Ron. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can he you was, tell a little about that? Well, he was my boss, and um, for when I worked at the Farber or the Jimmy Fund in the in the seventies, and then um, Dana Farber. Uh, and now mm -hmm. it's the Dana Farber. Mm -hmm. At the time, it was well. The new, we were in the new building when it, for the first. Uh, the first new building, I guess, oh, okay. at the time. Um, and then um, I went off to, I left and went to Arizona, and my mm -hmm. first husband passed away. Mm -hmm. And Arizona was not, you know, it was a fun place, it was nice, yeah. but it wasn't home, you know, it was, mm -hmm. it's not natural to have sun out all the time, <laughs> as far <laughs> as I'm concerned. And uh, so I decided I would, you know, where I wanted to be was back here in the Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So I moved back here in 19, uh, early 1980 and 
reconnected with Ron because I needed a reference to get a mm -hmm. new, to get a job, and we just uh, you know kind of struck up our friendship, and then it just blossomed into you know we've been together since, so, mm -hmm. so it's been nice. Yeah, that's uh, quite a while. Yeah, so, so yes, yeah, quite a long time. So. Mm -hmm. And so you had previously worked together, and then you went away. Then I went, and then out, went away back. for a while and came back, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, we just so it was it was nice because we started out as we had been friends. Well, he he had been my boss, and then we'd, right. we we obviously had been friends, and then it just you know kind of snowballed into to more than that. Mm -hmm, so it was great. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you never know how things. You never know. You never <laughs> burn your bridges. <laughs> Ah, you know, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, it's I've true. Never you know, you always, you never know. You know, I when I left it, it, to move to Arizona, you know, I said, he said, well, if you ever need a reference, call me. And mm. I said, I'm not going to work anymore. I'm going to, you know, become, you know, work, do volunteer work or what have mm. you. But little did I know that, you know, like two years later, that I would be going back to work, and I, you know, did need a reference, so it mm -hmm. worked out just fine. Mm -hmm. so. And so then you were working. Uh, couple for a while together back no, here? No, I, no. I, okay. He was, at the time when I moved back here in 1980, he was working in Rhode Island at the Rhode okay. Island Blood Center, mm -hmm. and I uh, was right. the medical director down there, and then I went to work for the Red Cross. So we kind I of were see. working for competitive organizations. No, well, ah. the, not competitive, <laughs> but different organizations, certainly mm -hmm. at the time. So, um, And then he worked there until he retired in, in 98. Okay. Uh, and then... Uh, so you had some really busy years of being a working couple, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, but always to come back to the serenity and right. the peace so, of your home here. Absolutely, yeah. Uh huh. And then retirements came. Yeah, and it's been uh, you know, you think you're you're retiring too, but you're or, or retiring from. You're really retiring too, you know. Hmm. To that's an interesting know. way of uh, saying. And it. we have plenty. You know, my husband has a t lots of uh, hobbies. Mm -hmm. You know, and th and interests, I guess, and uh, so we're very busy. You know, mm -hmm. it's just uh, and Hopkinton uh, is turned out to be just a really nice place to uh, stay and to live. I, hmm. Well, that's that's a little different than the snowbird uh, perspective, right? Of retire yeah, and go Yeah, my folks were spent you know some thirty or some odd years in Florida. That's just not for me. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, I like the change of seasons. We both do. We like getting away for a little bit. You know, in the winter to get mm -hmm. away from the snow. But you know, a couple weeks is. Mm -hmm. It's enough, you know. It's just enough. So. And I know you've had a lot of travel experience in your younger years, and you still travel now. But when I asked you earlier about the most uh, exotic uh, place that you travel to, you mentioned uh, Nova Scotia. Yeah, we go to Nova. Well, my husband's mother was from Nova Scotia, and uh, he's gone up there every summer since he can remember. And uh, I've gone up there every summer since 1980. So mm -hmm. uh, we just, uh, we have a little cottage up there and we go up and uh, to just kind of veg out and visit the mm -hmm. relatives. And No internet, is that? No and no in well, I, we probably could have it now, I suppose. Uh -huh. um, when we first started going up, well, we had cell phones, but no service up there. And mm -hmm. now we have a little service now and then. But it's, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, we just don't even turn the phones on when we mm -hmm. go up there. We just mm -hmm. kind of. You know, disconnecting. Just and connect for a couple of weeks. It's fine, you know, mm -hmm. we can do that. Mm -hmm. All of us should do that for mm -hmm. a little bit of time. And being know. in nature, it seems like uh, being having yeah. some quiet time. It is, it's nice. Being uh, yeah. surrounded by nature in different ways, whether by the ocean there or by farm animals and exactly. birds and trees yeah. here. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, so. Do you have anything um, burning in your bucket for your bucket list as people talk about <laughs> oh no I just you know continue yeah. to do some traveling you know we mm -hmm. went to Italy this year I'd like to go I could ah. go back tomorrow um, <laughs> we did some of the um, national parks this year out in Utah and mm -hmm. which was great but there's a lot more national parks to see mm -hmm. and this country is great so there's a lot of places to see here and uh, just continue to do some of that and uh, enjoy life here in Hockington as well so keep busy Mm -hmm. Most importantly, it's just to keep busy, you know, you gotta keep moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, enjoy. it certainly seems like you do that, and as you mentioned, you're busy with all of your volunteer work and giving to the community in many different ways in the organization. Well, I enjoy it. I, I really do enjoy it. I'm also I, this year I started working volunteering at the library, which is oh. another uh -huh. great Under place, and we, you know, desperately need to raise all that money so we can have a mm -hmm. new library or. It, not a new library, but an expanded one. Mm -hmm. Certainly, we I think we need that in Hopkinton. So, mm -hmm. well, uh, why would you say in our uh, remaining minute and a half? Uh, what you know, some people would say, "Oh, libraries are obsolete." Well, if you just you go there and that? spend a morning or an yeah. afternoon there, you find out how busy it is mm -hmm. and how you mm -hmm. know. There's just it's constant with people coming in and out. You know, with 
you know, whether it's use of computers, uh, proctoring exams, people come in there for mm -hmm. exams, people come in there to study, people come in there to use internet, people come in there to take, obviously take books out. It's a very busy place mm -hmm. and it's, you know, when you, it, they have programs, the, the meeting space is horrible, you know, mm -hmm. it's small, you can't do very much, so we really, it's, it, libraries are more used now and all the towns around us that have put new libraries in are finding that it's even even more use hmm. since hmm. they yeah. increased the size of their libraries. Yeah. So. And certainly something for all of the community, for everyone. Everyone, and absolutely. That seems or to be Or if you try to drag your little child in there and you have to go up the stairs and you can't bring mm -hmm. the, the stroller up and yeah. the bathroom's downstairs, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Mm. So. That certainly seems to be a part of your focus and uh, yes. contribution through the years in different ways is right. uh, uh, outreach and looking after uh, our fellow uh, neighbor out there in different ways, whether it's blood or books or whatever, exactly. you have your hand exactly. in a lot of things, yeah. uh, making a difference, and you also uh, have the balance of being out in a beautiful, uh, natural setting, uh, in quiet, and with a pig in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like a, a very good uh, way of life indeed. It is. We're very happy with And uh, I know we have to close, and I want to thank you for having us just before the holidays here oh, in your home, and it's lovely. And um, thank you very much you're for very having welcome. us, and a happy holiday season to you. You too, Cheryl. Thank All you. All right, thank you.